Well, good morning. Once again, you're stuck with me. Uh, <laughs> uh, just a few announcements here. Um, uh, yesterday morning, Lorraine Wenslaw passed away. So the, I guess we'll kind of keep people informed. The funeral arrangements are pending right now. So keep the family in your prayers. Uh, then David Osmus is hospitalized in Waconia, so we'll include him in our prayers as well. Um, reminder, next Sunday, Sunday evening, VBS starts on fire for God. So uh, I know we have uh, the Holtons have been working diligently to really put on a good program this summer. So hopefully I think they have a lot of kids signed up and volunteers. But next Sunday evening at 6 o'clock, the uh, VBS will begin. Uh, there's still a sign-up sheet in the back for the Twins baseball game on August 12th, so I think it's getting near the end of the sign-up period, so if anybody has an interest in going, try to get signed up. And uh, I guess lastly, for this eighth Sunday after Pentecost, we have a video sermon, but it's... Uh, President Matthew Harrison, so the president of our synod, and it's the sermon is from the 2022 youth gathering. So there may be some references in there, like about communion and that, that don't apply. But uh, I think you know next year, 2025, is the next youth gathering. So and the kids in the congregation are going to be, you know, raising funds and preparing for that. So. <coughs> I, uh, hopefully, it's a, it's a good sermon that you find interesting. Um, <clears throat> our order of worship today is service of prayer and preaching on page 260 and up on the screens. I open with uh, hymn 686, Come Thou Fount of Every Blessing.
God showed me. Behold, the Lord was standing beside a wall built with a plumb line, with a plumb line in his hand. And the Lord said to me, Amos, what do you see? And I said, a plumb line. Then the Lord said, Behold, I am setting a plumb line in the midst of my people Israel. I will never again pass by them. The high places of Isaac shall be made desolate, and the sanctuaries of Israel shall be laid waste. And I will rise against the house of Jeroboam with the sword. Then Amaziah, the priest of Bethel, sent to Jeroboam, king of Israel, saying, Amos has been fighting against you in the midst of the house of Israel. The land is not able to bear all his words. For thus Amos has said, Jeroboam shall die by the sword, and Israel must go into exile away from his land. And Amaziah said to Amos, O seer, go, flee away to the land of Judah, and eat bread there, and prophesy there. But never again prophesy at Bethel, for it is the king's sanctuary, and it is the temple of the kingdom. Then Amos answered and said to Amaziah, I was no prophet, nor a prophet's son, but I was a person and a dresser of sycamore face. But the Lord took me from following the flock, and the Lord said to me, Go, prophesy to my people Israel. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our second reading is from Paul's letter to the Ephesians, chapter 1. Blessed be God. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places, even as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and blameless before him. In love he predestined us for adoption as sons through Jesus Christ, according to the purpose of his will, to the praise of his glorious grace, with which he has blessed us in the beloved. In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of our trespasses according to the riches of his grace, which he lavished upon us in all wisdom and insight, making known to us the mystery of his will, according to his purpose, which he set forth in Christ as a plan for the fullness of time, to unite all things in him, things in heaven and things on earth. In him we have obtained an inheritance, having been predestined according to the purpose of him who works all things according to the counsel of his will, so that we, who were the first to hope in Christ, might be to the praise of his glory. In him you also, when you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, and believed in him, were sealed with the promised Holy Spirit, who is the guarantee of our inheritance until we acquire possession of it, to the glory of to the praise of his glory. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please rise. God of the gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the sixth chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. King Herod heard of it, for Jesus' name had become known. Some said, John the Baptist has been raised from the dead. That is why these miraculous powers are at work in him. But others said he is Elijah, and others said he is a prophet, like one of the prophets of old. But when Herod heard of it, he said, John, whom I beheaded, has been raised. For it was Herod who had sent and seized John, and bound him to prison for the sake of Herodias, his brother Philip's wife, because he had married her. For John had been saying to Herod, it is not lawful for you to have your brother's wife. Herodias had a grudge against him and wanted to put him to death, but she could not, for Herod feared John, knowing that he was a righteous and holy man, and he kept him safe. When he heard him, he was greatly perplexed, and yet he heard him gladly. But an opportunity came when Herod, on his birthday, gave a banquet for his nobles and military commanders and the leading men of Galilee. For when Herodias' daughter came in and danced, she pleased Herod and his guests. And the king said to the girl, Ask me for whatever you wish, and I will give it to you. And he vowed to her, Whatever you ask me, 
President Matthew Harrison of our... In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. I have a simple sermon for you today. I have one goal. Christ is preeminent in all things. Indeed. I want you to know this. You can be absolutely 100% certain that heaven is yours and you are a child of God. 100% certain. Who's the great doubter in the Bible? Who is it? Thomas. One of you came to me yesterday and you said, I have a dear friend and he's completely unsure about whether he's a Christian or not or can know that Christ is his and eternal life is his. I am very thankful for the doubters in the Bible, especially Thomas. You remember he says after Jesus rose, I don't care unless I see with my own eyes those nail prints and unless I put my fingers into his side, I will not believe. There was a Christian martyr about 70 AD on the east coast of India, the city of Chennai today. I've been there. He was confessing Christ, preaching Jesus and the free forgiveness of sins in Christ. And he was murdered by people who rejected that message. But many accepted the message. In fact, to this day, there's a church body that has descended from his preaching 2,000 years ago. Nobody doubts the fact that this guy landed in India in about 52 AD. You know what his name was? Thomas. How does a doubter go from show me, I don't believe it, to giving his life for the sake of people who need to know Jesus? I'll tell you how. He saw the resurrected Jesus with his own eyes. And you remember what he said? My Lord and my God. Do you think if it were fake? Do you think if Jesus had not rose from the grave? Do you think if Jesus had never shown himself bodily that Thomas and all the apostles would have exploded upon the world to share Christ? for some myth, for something dreamed up, for something untrue? Not a chance. My father-in-law is 98 years old. He was born in 1924. And if I just try to say something or tell him that something didn't happen in 1930, which he knew happened, how do you think he responds? He's stubborn. He's seen it. He saw it with his own eyes. Imagine if you took this century, 2022, and put it on the first and second centuries, and it were the year 122. There would be old people alive to this day who had seen Jesus ro uh, risen with their very own eyes. And you know what never happened? Nobody from within the movement ever came forward and said, I was there with those guys. I was there with Jesus. He did not rise from the grave. Nobody ever said that. Nobody ever came forth. Never. Not once. You know why? Because the resurrection is true. And that is great news for you, my dear friends. This Jesus is put to death for your transgressions and raised for your justification. 
Paul says many things about Christ in this text. He says that in Christ, all things were created in heaven and on earth. He says he, Christ, is before all things. In Christ, all things hold together. He is the head of the body, his church. He is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead. In everything, he must be preeminent. But Paul also teaches right here in this same text, you are redeemed. You have been bought back. You are His. Look to yourself and you will never be certain of anything. Look to your own piety, your own heart, the strength of your own faith. You will always be disappointed. Always. You will never sufficiently fulfill the law. Look to Christ and you will be absolutely 100% certain. Why? Because Christ is for you. We should fear, love, and trust in God above all things. First commandment. You don't do that. You fear ridicule from your friends if you speak up about Christ. You love all kinds of things that have nothing to do with Christ and are against Christ. You trust in your own abilities. You this or that. You don't pray. You are condemned by the first commandment. All of us are. And yet Jesus keeps it perfectly for you absolutely perfectly he fears loves and trusts his father at all times you misuse the name of the Lord your God every time you do something wrong or you say something wrong you drag Jesus name through the muck why because you're a Christian a little Christ but Jesus keeps the second commandment perfectly he prays, Our Father who art in heaven. He honors God's name in what He believes and what He teaches and what He does. And you know what? He does it for you. It's for yours. Martin Luther says it's impossible to pray a perfect Lord's Prayer without your mind wandering. You don't worship. You don't read the Bible like you should. You don't pay attention to sermons. The law condemns you and me. Jesus keeps the commandment perfectly for you. You try to be obedient to your parents, but oftentimes it chafes. And even if you are obedient, it's probably to get some other privilege, to get a little money to go to the movies or who knows what. You're doing the right thing for the wrong reason. Jesus is perfectly obedient to his parents. You haven't killed anybody, but you've hated people. I've hated people. Jesus says whoever hates his brother is a murderer. Jesus loves all people perfectly. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. And oh, your sexual sins. What if, what if our sexual sins, each one of us, it would take a long time, but each one of us would have just five seconds of our sexual sins on the screen before this stadium. We would all leave absolutely ashamed. Yet Jesus leads a perfectly chaste and decent life in every way. And he gives that to you. He has fulfilled the law for you. You can be 100% certain that our Father in heaven is pleased with you in Jesus. And there's much more. Jesus was conceived by the Holy Spirit. Your conception brought you into the world with sin. Jesus is perfect. He's born of the Virgin Mary for you. Luther says, it's like before God, 
you are the one who's born of the Virgin Mary. That's how certain you can be that God the Father loves you in Christ. He circumcised for you on the eighth day. He was a child for you, perfect in a way you would never ever be. He's a young person for you, perfect in a way you'd never be. He was perfectly obedient to his parents for you in a way you could never be. He learned the scriptures for you in a way you'll never learn them. Jesus is baptized for you. He goes into the water so that when you go into the water, you pull Jesus out with you. You and Jesus are connected in baptism, connected for eternity. Can you be certain of eternal life? You absolutely can, over and over again. The kingdom of heaven is for you. And he taught for you. I give my life as a ransom for many. He says, the Father knows when a bird falls to the ground. Aren't you a billion times more valuable than a sparrow for Pete's sake? The Lord has numbered every hair on your head. Can you be certain of God's love in Christ? Absolutely. Look at the lilies of the field. You worry about your clothes, what you'll wear. Look at the lilies and flowers. They're more beautiful than any dress in the world, in the history of the universe. And the next day they fall to the ground and dry up. Aren't you more valuable than they? Won't the Lord provide exactly what you need? Doesn't this Jesus say, Come to me, all you are weary and heavy laden, and I'll give you rest? He healed the blind. He healed the lame. He invited people to be healed and to believe in Him, and He does it all for you. He has mercy on anyone who comes to Him. The guy in today's Gospel came to Him and said, I've done everything. What do I really need to do? Jesus piled more law on him. The guy goes away empty-handed. Whenever you come to Jesus and say, Dear God, I'm a sinner. He's yours. Christ institutes the sacrament for you for the forgiveness of all your sins. You are going to receive His body and blood in just a few moments. Can you be certain that eternal life is yours? It's given and shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. You see, if you say, I am not certain, you say, Christ, body, and blood, don't do it. They're not strong enough. Christ institutes His sacrament for you. Christ is betrayed for you. Christ is put on a sinner's trial for you. He's condemned to death for you. Jesus dies a sinner's death on the cross for you. While he's on the cross, he says, forgive them, Lord. They know not what they do. All the times people sin against you and you hold a grudge till eternity. Jesus says, forgive them for you. It's counted to you. It's yours. And he says the great, greatest final word ever. It is finished. There's nothing you can do to earn heaven. There's nothing you can do to merit it. There's nothing you to do to make yourself more pleasing to God. Under the law, there is Christ who is all in all. Christ is yours. In Him all things hold together. All things. And that means all things work together for good for those who are called according to His purpose. Every one of us has crosses and difficulties in this life. Many of them. Some of us go through very, very difficult pains and troubles. But you need to know this. Jesus says, take up your cross and follow me. And every one of those crosses is made specifically to fit your shoulders exactly and just like Jesus cross accomplished your salvation 
just like Jesus' cross, looked like the worst possible thing that could ever happen. So your crosses, no matter how difficult they be or look or appear, your crosses are made by God himself exactly for your shoulders. And what do they do? They drive you to Jesus. They reduce you to nothing. They cause you to cling to Jesus alone, who is above all, preeminent in all things, working always in all things, so that you can be 100% certain that eternity is yours and you are a child of God. Count on it. It's absolutely true, as true as Jesus. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. We'll continue with hymn 699. I heard the voice of Jesus say.
rise. We'll continue with prayer. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For the gift of divine peace and of pardon with all our hearts and with all our minds, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For the Holy Christian Church, here and scattered throughout the world, for the proclamation of the gospel and the calling of all to faith, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For this nation, for our cities and communities, for the common welfare of us all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For seasonable weather and for the fruitfulness of the earth, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For those who labor, for those whose work is difficult or dangerous, and for all who travel, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For all those in need, for the hungry and homeless, for the widowed and orphaned, and for all those in prison, let us pray to the Lord. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you. 